I was telling them when I preached this morning, I have been tested many times. And I say it with all sense of humility. Satan knows that I can't commit adultery. It's not because I'm a strong man. Eh? I have something with the Holy Ghost. Daffy, if he tells me, run, I will not look back. Hmm? I will not say, Levo Chabelle. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. uh -uh. I will start running like a madman. I went to preach in Ugeli some years ago and as I was just entering the hotel in the night, oh, that night was powerful. They had been waiting for me in that meeting since 5 o'clock. But I had to, I was still in a denomination then and our senior pastor was arriving so I had to be in Benin as part of the pastors because if you don't appear you will be disciplined. So I was there. By the time they finished that meeting, we drove like mad people to make it to Ugeli. So by the time I got to Ugeli, I think it was after 8 or so, and the crowd was still there waiting. What I'm telling, for, telling you can be verified. Waiting. I just climbed the pulpit, and that thing that God releases on me just came. That meeting was dangerous. So by the time I finished, it was about past 10. So they carried me into the hotel. As we just entered the hotel, I just noticed the girl at the reception. Oh my God, she was glowing. Revu hmm. And then immediately I saw her, the warning alarms in my spirit went off. Pam. So I became very conscious. You know, as passenger entered the hotel now, she joined the protocol to carry my things and entered my room. As we were going, she just looked at me and said, Wow. Say, I like your gray hair. Elumanokobo. <laughs> Jesus. Ooh. I said, ah. <laughs> Satan is already late. Late. So I entered the room. She was just looking at me as I was talking to protocol. I said, um, what church do you pastor? Then I was in a denomination, so I said, I'm in so and so. You say, Kai. Say, I like pastors from that church, eh? <laughs> I'm telling you a live story. I like pastors from that church. Then she said, I have problems I want to discuss with you. I said, No, not now. <laughs> you know, she needs help. That's how some brothers have lost their oil. They tried to help a sister. A young man reached out to me and told me how he was struggling with uh, masturbation. So he didn't see any brother in the fellowship to talk to. But there was a sister that was on fire. You know, there are some sisters when you see them praying, you think that angels live in their house. They have become portals for the angelic. So when he saw the sister, he said, Kai! He went and told her, I said, my beloved sister, strengthen the brethren. Say, masturbation wants to finish me. So she prayed with him. You know what happened after that? Every time he reports to her that he masturbated, they will pray. Then when they finish praying, they will fornicate. So she became his outlet for satisfying his loss. The thing had become a yoke on his neck. That's why he said, I need help now. And the first question I wanted to ask him is, so there was no brother in the church. You know when Satan wants to lead you in the direction, in a wrong direction, he will give you excuses for your misnormal conduct. You say, I don't know why, oh, as a sister, I'm not comfortable around other sisters. Say, I don't know why, I'm just, I like to share my heart. <laughs> With brother. So her, her, her prayer partner is a brother. It will start normally. They'll be praying on WhatsApp. They'll pray for two hours and gist for three hours. Then one day the brother will say, the way you talk about God. Aish. Then before you know, they have drifted into things. They've started having conversations 
that when they finish having the conversation, their conscience will be pricked. But they won't stop. They won't stop because Satan wants to make sure that you don't build anything serious with God. So she told me, I have problems. I will come for counseling. I said, don't come. And she said, no, 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 don't worry. I will call you later to share my problems. So at exactly 12 a.m., I was already dozing. Because from Benin to that place, I was tired. I had moved in the spirit, so I needed to rest. I was dozing there. My phone intercom in the room rang. So with shock, I picked it. And it was her voice. She made sure that she had bent it into a melody. Oh, Velus. So can I come now? I said, to where? Ula <laughs> Marco. <laughs> At 12 in the 12 a.m. in the to where? Ah! I said, don't come, don't come, don't come, don't come. I banged the phone. Immediately I went to the corner of the room. I took the wardrobe that was there. <laughs> and I blocked the door. I don't know whether she has Becky. <laughs> I blocked the door. Then I immediately reached out to a brother of mine and I said, Bro, pray for me now. <laughs> I didn't sleep again. I lay down on the bed and I began to pray. Very usin man. If the eye wants to close like this, eh? I said, I lie. <laughs> Do I know whether she can come through the window? I, I stayed awake. I prayed. I sent you a message, man. I sent my wife a message. Say, see what did happen for Ogelio? You, you want to hide it? I had to call for backup, for support. I'm a man that has something with the Holy Spirit. There is nothing in this realm for which I want to trade it. You see, let me die unknown in worry. Let nobody announce my name in the nations of the world. But when I appear in heaven, I want angels to salute. Behold an overcomer. Satan did everything to stop him, but he determined that I want to live with God forever. That is my attraction in heaven, not the streets of gold. That the tabernacle of God will be announced that it dwells amongst men. And one on one, I will be able to do business with the one whom my heart loves. There is no price too high to pay for that thing. No price.